Michael was awakened at one o'clock in the morning. It was Frank Rutherford. Hello, Michael, you need to come down to Smith and Automotive. There was a fire. What? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Get on over here. Okay, I will be on over, said Michael. Grace woke up. What's going on, Michael? There's a fire over at Smith and Automotive. Should I go over with you? Um, why don't you stay here and I'll call you from the uh, location. Okay, Michael, let me know what's going on, said Grace. Michael gets up and gets dressed and gets over to the Smith and Automotive. There are fire trucks everywhere. It was a five alarm fire. Oh my gosh. As he approaches the location, he sees it's a total devastation. He sees Frank Rutherford over on the sidelines where he's allowed to stand as firefighters are fight, fighting the fire. Smith and Automotive is a complete disaster. Oh my gosh, it looks like a total loss, Frank Rutherford said to Michael Smith. And this is too out of hand, said Michael Smith. And everything I work for, it's gone. The fire chief asks, Who's in charge here? We both are, said Michael Smith in to the fire chief. My name is Fire Chief Garrison, Michael Garrison. Hi, Michael Garrison, fire chief that is. My name is Michael Smith in, and this is Frank Rutherford. We're both partners here at Smith and Automotive. How bad is the damage? I hate to say it, but it was electrical fire. That's what it looks like, just a close assessment of what we've been seeing from the damage. Oh my gosh. How's, how's it look so far from the other prospects? How's the garage look? How's everything else look? Well, from the damage, it's a lot of damage, a lot of water damage, a lot of, uh, just a lot. And we still have an investigation to continue with. We'll give you a further update as the night wears on, but there's not going to be a whole lot we can do until daybreak. It's still early in the morning and there's not much we can do until sunlight. Okay, thank you, Fire Chief, said Michael Smith, and, and Frank Rutherford shook the chief's hand. Michael calls Grace. Grace, I hate to say it, but it looks like it's a total loss up here. It looks devastating, to be honest with you. Well, your other locations are all operational, so don't think of this as a total loss. You have insurance. You can always rebuild. Yeah, that's true. But what about my employees? Well, that's the thing. You can always rebuild, Michael. Remember that. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine what my employees are going to go through during this time. Frank Rutherford got on the phone with Grace. Grace, it's going to be okay. We'll figure out a way to salvage whatever it is we need to salvage of this company. We'll just figure it out somehow. By the grace of God, everybody's okay. At least this happened on a weekend when nobody was here. Yeah, thank God, said Grace to Frank Rutherford. Well, Michael and... Got off the phone with Grace. Listen, Grace, I got to get going. I got to look and see if there's anything I can do before I leave and come home. Okay, said Grace, as they hung up on the phone. Frank, I just want to stay here and try to sort this out. Are you going to stick around, Frank? Said Michael. I think I should. I think I need to be here just to support you and just be here and pray. As the dust started to settle and morning came, Michael started to pray. He just did as much as he could, said Michael. What do you mean, said Frank? Well, the chief. I mean, he did the best he could. To, I mean, the fire department and everybody came here and they salvaged whatever they could, and they couldn't do anything to save the business. 
listen, it was an electrical fire. That's the most dangerous kind of fire, said Frank. Listen, I'm going to head home. I'm going to sit and pray. As the smoke was starting to clear, it was quite heavy smoke, and Michael just continued to pray. But by the time he got done praying, he just got exhausted and wanted to go home. He smelled like smoke, of course. He got in his car and headed home. Grace, he woke Grace up and she goes, oh, you smell like smoke. Yeah, I better take my clothes off and put them in the laundry. You need to take a shower too, said Grace. You smell pretty bad. So Michael went in and took a shower and took his clothes into the laundry to wash. Oh boy, poor Michael, said Grace to herself. As Michael tried to settle this all in his mind, word got around. The news story, of course, made the headline news and of course it made the TV news. Of course, employees were going to try to get in touch with Michael at some point, but it was just starting to surface, of course, as the news story started to spread. Carol Henderson called HR and called around 9 o'clock that morning. But Michael wasn't taking calls. Michael was too devastated by the experience but he was going to catch up with the other people as soon as he could get his bearings together. Grace said, you know, you're going to have to call your employees and try to make a decision on what you were going to do. I think what I'm going to do is have a temporary location and try to figure out what to do from there. A temporary location. What, what could you do? How, how do you do that? Well, I don't know. I, I'm just thinking out loud, Grace. I think you should wait and see what happens with the fire chief and call the insurance company. So Michael made his phone calls and called the fire chief and also called the insurance company. By the time they made the assessment and everything was done by the weekend, Michael found out that the loss was an incredible $10 million in losses. Not to mention Frank Rutherford's losses included. His losses were in the millions as well. He called his insurance company as well. But they did say there was a sign of hope that they could rebuild and that it would take some time for demolition and other things to happen until the investigation was over with the fire department and it got it all clear. Once everything was all settled and called the employees into a conference meeting at a local hotel, he called in and made sure that everybody was in contact with Carol Henderson. Carol Henderson and Michael were in touch finally to get an assessment of all the employees that were going to be at the conference. Carol, listen, we're going to rebuild. It's going to take some time. How we're going to retain our employees is the question. We might lose some employees, but if we don't, that's a good thing, but we're going to start over. So, in the meantime, we have to get the all clear. And once we get the all clear, demolition and rebuilding will start. Oh, so it will happen? Yes, it will happen. It's just going to take some time. Oh, boy. What a endeavor this is going to be, said Carol. Yeah, but we're going to meet at the conference room at the hotel to work. People are going to have to work on their laptops from the time being, and we're going to have to figure out something for office space. I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how many days a week we're going to be on payroll or whatever we're going to do, but we're going to figure something out. So I'll have to hire some kind of business 
associate that's going to be able to guide us through this. Some kind of company business coach or somebody that'll be able to guide me through this. So in the meantime, let me make some phone calls and get back to you. But we will have that conference. And once we have that conference, I think we will have a better assessment on what to do. Okay, said Carol. Let me know when the conference will be. I'll let you know, said Michael. Nice talking to you, said Carol. Nice talking to you too, said Michael. So Michael and Carol hung up. Michael made some more phone calls and he got to talking to somebody who handles, assesses damages like this when a company is in the middle of a tragedy and a crisis management. So what they decided to do is they were going to bring in fax machines and computers into a corporate environment and have a setup where they could actually still run the business and still be able to keep most of the records of the employees. That wasn't hard to do because it wasn't on a hard drive. Most of the software that they had was destroyed. So, and so, so much of the other stuff, but they could still salvage it through email and some of the other servers they had in the backup. Michael was kind of relieved to hear that. So the meeting in the conference was set for another two days in advance. So Michael called Carol and told her that that's what he was planning on doing is having the meeting in two days. So Monday came and Carol said, when's the meeting? We're going to have the meeting on Wednesday. Okay, said Carol. So everybody's going to be off until Wednesday. And he got the final assessment from the fire chief. And the fire chief came back that they got the all clear and that everything was ready for demolition. So the demolition crew was hired and they were going to demolish the properties that were destroyed by the fire. They had to quickly act because the destruction of the property was quite devastating. And Michael was traumatized by it. But they were going to act quickly and the rebuilding of the property was going to be quite fast and quick. As they already hired a contractor who was looking at the damages and all the old building plans. And they were going to try to build exactly what was built before or even better, a better structure altogether. Since this time was going to be a lay time, everybody was going to have some downtime. He said that he was going to be prepared to possibly lose some employees, but he was prepared for that as well. So Michael was prepared by Wednesday. He told Grace to come in with him. So Grace kindly asked the nanny and also another babysitter to sit and spend the rest of the night with the family as Michael was going to be spending a good part of the afternoon and evening with his staff. At the staff meeting at the Waterfall Hotel, Michael addressed the issues and everybody was asking questions about what happened, the damage and everything. Michael quickly answered the questions, but really wanted to get to the point. The demolition was on its way and that the contractors were hired and everybody was very surprised at how quickly things were moving. That the building would be erected as quickly as possible and we would be back to work as soon as we had a chance. We had a crisis management team on schedule and the insurance was taking care of most of the damages that were responsible for the fire. Not responsible for the fire, but responsible for the, the payments that were going to be 
handling the impact of the fire. Michael was relieved that he had a good insurance policy on the building. Frank Rutherford got to the meeting just as Michael was addressing the issues. Michael agreed that Frank Rutherford also was going to address it in his own conference with his own employees as well. As people were asking lots of questions, everybody got their questions answered. It was a long afternoon and it was getting close to dinner time. But Carol was satisfied and so were the employees and they were willing to stick it out. Michael was relieved. Listen, I don't know how long this is going to take, but this is going to be some downtime for a lot of you. A lot of you might need to take a second job or might have to find new employment. I don't know what this is going to look like in the long term, but we will be back in operation as soon as we have the the green light. I want everybody back at work as soon as we can get the doors back open. Carol was relieved and so were a lot of employees. You got our support, boss, said one employee. You got my support, said Carol. You got my support, said Macy. Uh, I'm so grateful for all of you. Grace hugged Michael, and she was so supportive. Michael, I'm so proud of what you've been able to accomplish. Listen, as soon as you start seeing building and builders and contractors, and you start seeing the building erected, You know, we're almost there. We just got to get the furniture moved in and everything ready to go and computers back up online and everything ready to go. It won't be too long. As weeks started passing by, it started to see noticeable changes as the building was starting to be erected. Michael was so impressed by the work the contractor was doing that he told Grace that, look, he said, Grace, you have to see this. You've got to come over to the building. The building was almost fully erected. They had done all the brickwork and all the work that needed done to get the building fully erected. Even the wiring was even done. Even the garage was ready to go. Wow, said Grace, it's almost ready to go. This is impressive work. As the inspectors came by to look at the work, they were too impressed. There was a lot of building permits and work that had to be done at the courthouse, so they had to make sure that this would never happen again. So as all the inspectors were inspecting the building, to make sure that everything was going to get the all clear. They got the green light to go ahead and start getting everything ready to go for everything had to get wired and prepared for the employees to come back. Well, Grace said, it doesn't look like it's too much longer. No, it looks like we're almost there. As The desks were ordered and the computers were ordered and windows were being put in. It started to look like a building. Even the landscapers were now being asked to go ahead and do landscaping. Frank Rutherford was impressed because he was a little further behind, but he was almost on schedule with Michael. He was going to probably open a little later than Michael, but Michael had everything going forward. As Michael Carrington came up from the Hollister office, he saw that the landscape was being done. He was really impressed with Michael Smithton's work. It's not that much longer before opening day. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more time, but I think we should be ready. As the movers came in with the desk and everything, and computers were getting lined up as cable guys were coming in and out, wiring had to get looked at by the inspectors again. They had to make sure everything was prepared and ready to go. It was looking closer and closer to opening day. And Michael was grateful and so was Grace.
they were very happy with the work that was done.